my signal. Unleash hell. So they asked me to make a speech, right? You know, and I'm standing in front of everybody and I think, I don't really know what to say. And I thought, hey, movie quotes, that's what I'll do. So I look at everybody and I try to inspire them by saying, remember, what we do in life echoes in eternity. And remember too, to live your life a quarter mile at a time. And always remember, coffee is for closers. Yeah, I'm not really good at that, am I? Oh, hello, my name is uh, Fu Manchu, and you know what? One of my favorite movies of all time is Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Oh, I love that movie so much. And I'm always looking for a really good 1-6 scale figure of him, but they're always, you know, really expensive or sold out or custom or custom and really expensive and sold out. You know, it's really hard to get one. But I found one that went up for pre-order and I was like, oh, I gotta have that. So I pre-ordered it and man, I have it in my grubby little doll hands today. But first, speaking of Gladiator, if you haven't seen the History Buffs version of that movie or whatever, check it out. Because like every episode they've ever made, I highly recommend it. Hello and welcome History Buffs. My name is Nick Hodges and today we'll be taking a look at Gladiator. Thank you, Nick. I'll take it from here. So be sure to go over to Nick's YouTube channel, History Buffs, and check out that Gladiator video. Or be sure to check out all of his videos because they are awesome. And in fact, tell him Foo sent you. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at a 1-6 scale Gladiator figure. So if you want to watch that with me, let's go check it out, shall we? Today's review will be on the HH model and how you toys, Melvin Potter. Oh, I'm sorry, Gladiator. I was thinking of a Daredevil character. Now, I just received this box in the mail today, and this box is absolutely huge. And the less said about that picture, the better. But you know what? This thing is 20 inches tall, and it is super heavy. So let's look inside this box, shall we? Like I said, don't talk about that picture. And with the shipping box removed, holy cow, just check this out. Now, this box is 20 inches as well, and man, oh man, is that an awesome picture. Down here, we've got the Gladiator name, and you got a really awesome picture of the figure itself. Now, this figure is out in two different versions, the deluxe version and the normal version. Now, this is the normal version. The deluxe one has more chain mail down his arms, on both arms, which Russell Crowe only had chain mail on one of his arms and that's it so I was like I don't really need that because I don't really don't want to take some of the chainmail off of his right arm but yeah I figured it's already coming with the chainmail down here so that's enough to make me happy and it comes with like an axe you know the one I think that he shoved through that one guy's foot in the uh, gladiatorial combat thing down the side here you can see another picture of the figure and there you can see the chainmail on his arms and that looks really awesome and that's real chainmail as well down here it's got little logos and stuff like that and when we flip it around this way there is nothing but scratches this box is brand new and it's already scratched up down here we've got some warnings saying don't go into gladiatorial combat with russell crowe he will beat you up with a telephone and then over here we've got another picture of the unmasked russell crowe figure and man if it looks that good i will be happy now a lot of people had talked about the first release of this where he's in his first outfit from the movie and they all said you know oh the head looks really bad because he looks fat faced and I gotta say, when I saw some of the reviews, I agree, it doesn't look bad, but he does look fat-faced. And this one, from what I can tell, has been tweaked quite a bit, and man, oh man, I cannot wait. So I say we waste no more time and open up this box, what do you say? Now, the front of the box is held on with magnets, and when you remove it, you get this really awesome backdrop of the Colosseum, and that is awesome. The only problem is, this thing is 20 inches tall, and when laid flat, almost 20 inches wide. So this is not gonna fit in the average shelf, but man, it looks really awesome. Over here, when you take that off, you can see there's the usual foam there. So when we look underneath this foam, let's see what we will find. We find some very velvety foam there and a truly awesome Russell Crowe figure. Just check that out. That makes me very happy. Now, as you can see, he has no plastic on him whatsoever. And man, I am so grateful that his nose didn't get messed up or anything like that. This looks so good. Look at the weathering there on his little skirt. That looks so awesome. The real chain mail there and everything. Like I said, this is the regular release, so he doesn't have it down his sleeves and stuff, which is fine by me. But man, that looks so good. Good. 
Now, over here to the side, you will see his helmet. Now, that is made out of die-cast metal, and that is awesome. His armor is made out of metal. His arm guards, I believe, his shin guards, all of it, and that is so cool. Now, if you know anything about 1-6 scale figures, then you know, you know they're 12 inches tall. Well, look at this. Here he is in the package. So there he is, and we go down to his feet, and look at this. The package keeps on going. This thing is absolutely huge and as you can see there's a polystone base underneath there got the figure his extra hands some little squares i'm assuming that's where some accessories are this looks absolutely incredible now removing that lower piece of foam check out this base that is just the backdrop to the base <laughs> that is awesome now yes it's out of scale with the figure because it's you know forced perspective i guess but you know what that is so cool, and yes, that is a polystone base. That is so awesome. After removing the figure, you will find that you've got his little metal shoulder pauldrons or whatever, whatever you want to call those, that armor or whatever, right there underneath them, and that is so cool. And yes, this figure has multiple versions of it. You can either make like the early first gladiatorial thing when he first gets to the Colosseum, the way he looks there by changing up the armor a little bit, taking off his shin guards and stuff, or you can put him all together with these and stuff on there, and you'll have the final battle look which is the one I want. This is so cool. So let's pull all these things out and look at them, shall we? Removing the pieces of the figure, you will find that there's an extra layer underneath that first layer. And you've got the base, you've got his sword, and then up here you have his shield and the rest of the base. And that is so awesome. So let's pull all of these pieces out and check them out. So here's the figure fresh out of the package, stood straight up. And first impressions, Holy cow, this is the gladiator figure that I have wanted for years. This is amazing. Now, there are people out there that will complain about the body. Now, the body isn't a Fison body. You can see the joints and stuff like that. But I have to say, I'm not unhappy with it. Yes, seeing the joints does make it a bit ugly. But man, this body is super tight and fits his physique perfectly. This is very cool indeed. Looking at that head... Oh man, they've actually tweaked the original head sculpt and it looks so much better. His hairline looks so much better. He's got his little mole on his cheek there, the mole between his eyes, or his eyebrows I should say. I mean, it looks just like him. If anything, I think maybe his beard goes up a little too high because he had more of a, a straighter line on his beard, you know, instead of up on his cheeks like that. I mean, he had like stubble there, but... His beard line was more straighter, but you know what? It doesn't matter because this is amazing because this is so cool. And like I said, I have been wanting a good 1-6 scale Russell Crowe from Gladiator for years, and this just looks amazing. Now, there's one complaint right there. You can see that the uh, body color and the head color don't really match. Now, it isn't as noticeable in person, in my opinion, looking at it past the camera here, but it does show up on the camera really bad. But you know what? doesn't matter on the shelf you're not really going to notice that it'll just look like a little gladiator figure just sitting there but just check out that likeness that is absolutely amazing that's definitely russell crowe's mouth that's everything this is so cool and they did an amazing job and honestly you know people are complaining about stuff like this either a can afford the customs and stuff that are like you know spot on in every detail but you know what? This one is perfect to me. I love the tattered parts of his outfit there. That looks so good. If I had one complaint, it would be that he doesn't have his necklace because he always had that necklace on with, you know, the string around his neck and stuff. I guess you could make a custom one because technically you just need to see the string. You don't need to see the necklace. But man, this armor is so awesome. Like I said, it's made out of die cast and it looks so cool. And some people will say that the details are off. But not that I could tell. I mean, this looks pretty darn good to me, but I haven't like compared it to stills, but I'm going by memory and it looks pretty good. Over here, you can see the muscle body. And then down here, you've got his other gauntlet right here, which is also made out of metal. He comes equipped with these uh, weapon holding hands, as you can see. Working our way over here, you can see that chain mail and those little uh, tassels. Now, the tassels are different. Uh, he, I think he's only got three, I think, in the final scene. I'm not 100%. But I think the tassels are a little bit different, and I don't think he's wearing chainmail at the end at all in the final battle scene. So yeah, you'd have to take that off. And then, but I don't, I'm not gonna worry about it. Over here, you got his other gauntlet here and his other gripping hand. And I love how dirty his skirt is, or whatever. That's cool. He actually has shorts on underneath that matches this little blue shorts, and that's pretty cool. And down here, you've got his metal shin guards. Now, like I said, if you want the first gladi uh, gladiator. Uh, 
seen in the Colosseum. You have to take these off and stuff like that. And you have to change out the pieces because the little pauldrons or whatever snap on with a little snap, as you can see right there. That one looks like it's coming off. I hope that's not messed up. But uh, it might be. It kind of looks like it with the strings and stuff like that. But who knows? Maybe it'll hold on. But uh, anyways, I'm pretty happy with this. That's very cool. Now, like I said, I'm just going to go with the final battle look and uh, junk like that because it's the closest to being, you know, the easiest to put together. But man, this is so awesome indeed. You can see there, I've got his skirt all messed up trying to put him on the stand. But yeah, I love it. He's just missing the blood that would be coming down off the side or whatever of his skirt and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said, people complain about the legs and the arms and stuff because you can see those joints. And it looks like the uh, dye of that's coming off on there, but that's okay. I mean, I don't care about that. And then down here, because he can be dirty. He's a gladiator. But um, but yeah, um, people do complain about that. And yes, it would look better with a Fison body. And if you have the money and the ability to find a good body and swap all this stuff onto it, dude, go for it. That would make this figure even better. As for accessories, he comes with this little backdrop. And man, this looks so cool. Now, if you look at the bottom there, it's got a little lip. And that attaches to the uh, polystone base or whatever. But we'll talk about that in a second. First up, let's just look at the front here, how it's all painted and stuff. It looks so good. And honestly, this would be good with any of your figures. I mean, any figure, any size, stand them in front of this. This would look amazing if you had like a mummy figure or, I don't know, gladiator. Hmm, I guess that would work. But you know what? Little G.I. Joes, anything. That is so cool. You can see the little lip right there where it slides on top. Or, yeah, it rests on top of the base. But man, this looks so cool. Paint it green. You've got Castle Grayskull. That is so awesome. But what's really neat is if you flip it around, you'll see that they didn't cheap out. They actually painted the back of it. I mean, they didn't have to do that because, I mean, if you're not seeing the back all the time, you don't really need to go through all this trouble. But man, that looks so good. And I really love the sides. This looks so neat. All that broken brick and stuff, the rock, that looks so awesome. And it's like that on both sides. That is so cool. Now, when you put both pieces of the base together, this is what you get. And honestly, that looks so cool indeed. And if you don't want to use the back part there, you don't have to. That is so awesome. It's such a neat option to have. And it is worth noting that both of these polystone pieces do have that like felty kind of foamy stuff on the bottom. So it won't scratch up anything. So that is really neat. He also includes six extra hands. You've got these two hands right here. You have two relaxed hands and you also have two fists. By far the coolest accessories he includes is this die cast gladiator helmet and what an iconic helmet it is. And this thing is heavy. And because it's die cast, it's not going to be really, you know, as small as it is in the movie on his head. But you don't have to put it on his head if you don't want to. You can always put it on the ground or have him hold it and stuff. You know what? That's the way I'm going to do it because I don't want to cover up the Russell Crowe head anyways. And this would just look good at his feet or in his hands. This is amazing. Now over here, he also includes this sword. Now this sword is also made out of die cast. Very pointy, as you can see there. And very, you know, I won't say sharp, but metal. I mean, this is a little knife. I mean, seriously, that is very cool indeed. And it looks like the real deal. Last up for the accessories included with this regular edition is this really awesome shield which you used in the arena fight against Tigress of Gaul. And that is so amazing. All the little gladiatorial figures fighting there. That is awesome. If you look carefully, you'll see a lion attacking a guy right there. That is so cool. But yeah, looking at this, you'd think that it was made out of die cast as well. But this is actually plastic and it's painted so well that it blends in with the die cast pieces and looks amazing. Equally amazing is the underside. As you can see, it looks like it's made out of wood and you have the leather straps and the iron bar where you put his hand through or his arm through and that is so cool. Now, I really thought that this figure came with the extra little shoulder pieces of armor that you could swap out to have the different looks, but apparently not. So those two that I showed you already are the only two that it comes with. Um, either mine didn't come with them or those only come with the deluxe editions and that would make more sense, I guess. Uh, but yeah, apparently mine didn't come with them, so I can only have the final battle look, and that's it, really, because I can't change out the shoulder pieces. But that's okay, because I'm still happy with it. Because what a figure this is. It looks absolutely amazing standing up like this, and I am so happy. Now, like I said, with the regular edition, I guess you can only have the final battle look, you know, with the shoulder pieces up like that, and, you know, stuff, but... 
it doesn't matter to me because that's what I wanted. And uh, so not getting those extra pieces is okay by me. But it would have been cool to have the option. But that's all right because, like I said, I wouldn't want to start taking pieces off of this figure and junk like that. But, man, this looks so cool. Now, I don't recommend having yours holding the helmet like this because it's a very... It's not loose. He is holding it. But if you bump it and it were to fall, that die-cast helmet will chip or probably scratch or damage that base. So be very, very careful if you do it like this. But man, this is so amazing. And like I said, that sword is super pointy and I wouldn't have it any other way. This looks absolutely amazing. And after all these years, I finally have a Russell Crowe Gladiator 1-6 scale figure. So there's my review of the HH model and how you toys <gasps> Gladiator 1-6 scale figure. And man, this is awesome. Now, this is not the first version that they've made. Like I said, they make the general version at the beginning and it looks so awesome. But man, I think this is a vast improvement because the head looks so much better in my opinion. And this is just the, this is what I wanted all these years to have a gladiator figure and this just looks so cool and you know i'm not usually a big fan of the die cast stuff on these one six scale figures because i don't really care it usually drives the prices up and stuff like that but having this figure in hand man this armor is heavy and it is so awesome and honestly if you're a big fan of the movie gladiator like i am i highly recommend it so until next time tune in for more <laughs> Reviews! <laughs> hey, this is Nolan North. You don't want to miss Foo Reviews. And I'm out!